Well, joining me back in the hot seat is Anita Anderson from Centerpoint, Iowa. You're the epitome of elegance. I noticed that yesterday. Just looked beautiful. You're a science teacher in yes. high school. You have a home with three lovely children, and also it's full of cockroaches, I understand. Yes. What is that? I, I'm not lying. I can't make this stuff up. You love little furry, hairy insects. No, they're right? not furry. It's no, just a very disgusting. Plain. Well, people in New York think so, but they haven't met my cockroaches. Well, what is special about your Well, they're, they're a tropical cockroach without a wing, and it's a Madagascar hissing cockroach. They're very large and, and actually very friendly. Do you have a lot of friends? Oh, you do? Yes. All like me. <laughs> well, so, all right, so a lady who loves insects, yeah. it can't be all bad, right. because that means you're very giving, loving, kind person. Well, you got to love right. a bug. All right, you got to love a bug. Well, we got to <laughs> love you, all right, no matter what. We want you to see you win a million dollars, all right? You. You've already won 300, which means you're okay. just 12 questions away from winning a million dollars. Remember, you have all three lifelines still waiting for you to Okay. Use. Okay, you ready to play? Yep. Audience, you ready to play? All right, bug lady, let's play millionaire. Okay, for $500, Edith. According to a classic nursery rhyme, little boys are made of frogs, and snails and what is up your alley? Puppy dog tails, giant blue whales, hammers and nails, lollipop trail. A, final answer. I agree, you got it for $500. Stone <laughs> Point An army unit that fights on horseback is known as what? Battery, artillery, musketry, cavalry. I am going to guess D, Cavalry, final answer. Good guess. You got $1,000. $2,000 now, 10 away from the million. What is the primary focus of Harper's Bazaar magazine? Home furnishings, women's fashion, publishing industry, political commentary. Don't believe furnishings, and I'm pretty sure publishing and political. So, being the guesser that I am, B, women's fashion, final answer. Another good guess. You got it for $2,000. Can we go for $4,000? Okay. Which of these car manufacturers is based in Sweden? Saab, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW. Well, I do not know anything about cars. Do you have a car? Yes, but I couldn't even tell you the manufacturer. <laughs> it's silver, and it's a van. It's silver, and it's a van. Okay. It's horrible when I do uh, repairs and they ask me what kind of car is it, I say a silver van. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask the audience on this one. All right, audience, Yetta, we need your help. On your keypads using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Okay, 83% believe it's Saab, 10% for Audi, and then you have BMW and Volkswagen. Well, that was going to be my guess if I was going to eliminate something. I was going to pick that one. So, I'm going to guess about anybody knows more about cars than I do. So I'll go with A, Saab, final answer. And our audience is right as usual. You got it. Thank you. Hey, Dieta, you're going for 8,000 here. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh made history when he made his non-stop solo flight from the U.S. to what European city? Rome, London, Paris, Madrid. I'm such a guesser. I can't stand not guessing. Well, you can guess if you want, but if you're wrong, you go down to a thousand dollars. But if you're right, you, you've got 8,000. And you do have the lifelines left to use two of them. I would just love to guess on this, and so what? Okay. I want to guess Paris, the final answer. Mm. 
You're right. He went to Paris. You got it for eight thousand dollars. You're going for $16,000. What U.S. state's nickname, the Volunteer State, came from its citizens' willingness to volunteer as soldiers? Tennessee, Arkansas, South Carolina, Ohio, the Volunteer State. I just went on vacation to the Volunteer State two summers ago. And so... Tennessee is a volunteer state. A, final answer. You like the sound of $16,000? Yeah. All right, you got it. $16,000. It's a big one now, 32. If you okay. get this, you can't leave with less than All 32. All right, that's 000. good. Okay, you get it. By definition, a sonnet consists of how many lines of verse? Five. 7, 10, 14, a sonnet. I think this is one you either know or you don't. <laughs> and I would be in the category of don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to have to phone a friend. Okay, who do you want to phone? That's my mother-in-law, Marilyn. Your mother-in-law, Marilyn, you think she'd know this? literature major. Oh, good. Okay. Well, our friends at AT&T are going to help us get Marilyn on the line. Hello. Hello, Marilyn. Yeah. Hey, it's Meredith from Millionaire. How are you? Okay. Well, listen, Marilyn, Deanna's here doing pretty well. She's got 16000 going for 32000 She just needs a little bit of help, okay? Okay. I hope I can. Okay. Deanna, you have 30 seconds. Your time starts right now. Out. Marilyn, by yes. definition, a sonnet consists of how many lines of verse? Five, seven, ten, or fourteen? Oh, dear, I'm not sure about that. It's been so long since I have studied sonnets. Four, fourteen seconds, I guess. Uh, let's see. Seven I, seconds. I don't want to guess, Dieta, because I'm, I, I just don't know for sure. Okay. Okay. Yow. You said you don't know what to do. I am a guesser. I just have a gut feeling to, to guess 14 and just go for it, but I'm probably wrong. You know, why am I here? If I don't take a chance. 50 50 it for me. Okay, computer, please randomly take away two wrong answers, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. Oh, rats. Is those, are those the two? Yes. <laughs> okay, so, you know, this will just be fun. I'm just going to take my gut feeling of 14. Kids are gonna kill me. <laughs> Is that your final? Yes, it's my final answer. Okay. Oh, your kids aren't gonna kill oh, you. You got it. Oh, just wouldn't go away. That's when I knew I had to talk to my doctor about my migraines. She prescribed Imitrex. Prescription Imitrex targets your total migraine. Pain, nausea, sensitivity to light and sound. Some pain relievers are made for general kinds of pain. Imitrex is targeted. It was the first medicine of its kind, believed to target the nerves and blood vessels that trigger migraine without drowsiness. Imitrex is not right for everyone or every migraine. 
If you have certain types of heart or blood vessel disease or uncontrolled blood pressure, you shouldn't take Imitrex. Very rarely, certain people, even some without heart disease, have had serious heart-related problems. So talk to your doctor, especially if you have risk factors for heart disease such as smoking, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol, or if you're pregnant, nursing, or taking medication. I don't know why I waited so long. Are you still waiting for relief? Ask your doctor about Imitrex and target your total migraine with Imitrex. Coming up tonight on CBS 2 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Tiffany O'Donnell. The season got underway last Thursday. Tonight, the Colonels come home to the new Veterans Memorial Stadium. See how many people officials hope fill the stands. Plus, highlights in sports on CBS 2 News at 10. Controversy remains down the street from day two of the Masters. Tonight, local women golfers talk about Augusta National keeping women off the membership list. Plus, the center point woman goes for a million on who wants to be a millionaire on CBS 2 News at 10. To celebrate 100 years of automotive innovation, your local Ford store is offering 0% financing for 60 months or 3,000 cash back on some of America's favorite cars, trucks, and sport utilities. Taurus, Ranger, ZX2, Windstar, Explorer, Expedition, Excursion, and F-150. Celebrate the century with 0 for 60 or 3,000 cash back. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. teacher and bug lover from Center Point, Iowa. And I must say, you're doing so great. You said you were a guesser, and you proved that with the last question. Didn't know how many lines there were in a sonnet. Went for 14 because somewhere in your gut, you thought that was right. But it was a guess. Yes. And you worried that your kids would kill you. You have three kids. Yes. And I love this. With the money, first of all, you want to help your husband pay for a new dental office. Yes. Then put the kids through college. Oh, yeah. And, of course, typical mom, you come last on the list. If there's any money left... Buy an outfit. Buy an outfit. All right. Well, listen, honey, you got $32,000... You're five away from one million dollars. Okay. Your lifelines are used up, but you are a good guesser. Are you ready to play? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. You have no choice. I'm guessing yes. I'm ready <laughs> okay, to play. let's play. <laughs> he had it for sixty-four thousand dollars. What was Stephen King's first published novel? The Dead Zone, Carrie, Salem's Lot, The Stand. It is a free guess. Well, and that's exactly what it's going to be for me. A guess. Did you read any Stephen King? Nope, okay. never. Never. Carrie just hits me, and being the guesser that I am, I think Carrie B will be my final answer. Get something with a lot of sequins on it. You got $64,000. Ah! I can't believe it. Don't you think? Really gaudy and wild. Oh my Or a designer gosh. outfit. Okay. You bet. All right, Smarty, you're going for $125,000. Four away gosh. from a million. Cricket, baseball, and round the clock are all popular variations of what game? Darts, dominoes, croquet, marbles. I'm starting to get the urge to guess again. Darts is a popular game. People play it in, in bars and things. They don't play those other things there. So I'm thinking if I didn't guess darts, I would probably always hate the game of darts for the rest of my life. And if I walked away, so I'm getting the urge to guess again. Well, great risk. Can't help myself. I believe I'm going to guess. Because it'll be fun. It'll be fun to guess darts. A final answer. You call this fun? No. 
I call this nerve wracking. Yes. You have $125,000. Oh my God! <laughs> Getting fun now. <laughs> <sighs> Ready? Okay. All right. Do you have 125,000? Go over 250. Oh, that's good. three away from a million dollars. Let's see the question. How many calories does a person have to burn to lose one pound of fat? 1,500. 2,500. 3,500. 4,500. This one you think you know? Oh, I thought I did. I've, ar I've calculated this before. I've come up with two different answers, and one was my first, and not one of those was my first guess, which was another answer. Oh, you mean when you do the math in your head? Yeah, you when I do the math in my head, I get two different answers based on what I... What was your gut feeling? Fat. My gut feeling was 3,500. And then what did you come up with when you tried to do the math? I, well, it depends on if there's nine calories per gram of fat in fat or almost five. Fat. Fat is high calorie. But do I want to risk my nervous math calculations? <laughs> 9.1 calories per gram. 9, 2, 7, 3, 2, 18, 6. 18 and 6? Well, that's why I'm so nervous. I was adding wrong. 20, 20, I get 24, 57. 2,457 calories. That is so stinking close to B, isn't it? I'm just going to have to walk away because I, I've come up with a number of different answers and I think my brain is on overdrive and doing the math is not a safe thing for me to do right now in my head. And, and that'll be a nice amount of money. And... 125000 Nothing. <laughs> now see, you I'm want me to start over again? No, no, it's a tremendous <laughs> amount of money. <laughs> All right, all right, that's it, I, final end, final. I'm You're gonna done. stop. Deanna, you gave it everything, <laughs> everything you possibly could. You're the guesser, so be the guesser and make your guess. I know this is the final 125, I just want to hear what your guess okay, would have been. Okay, so you... my gut feeling, it, before even the numbers came up, 3,500 came into my mind. So let's see, 3,500. Oh! $125,000 is fantastic. You're a great player. I don't blame you for taking that time. Thank you. 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 Kate Winslet puts the moves on Dave. Plus, the CBS mailbag and a special top ten tonight. It's a beautiful morning. I don't want to hear the news at ten. It's the home opener for the Cedar Rapids Colonels with high expectations amid financial concerns. The Colonels open their home season tonight in the second year of their new ballpark. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Dave Benton. And I'm Tiffany O'Donnell. The team's lease payments for the city-owned stadium doubled this year, so every taxpayer in town has a stake in this. CBS 2's Jim Grayway has more. Dave and Tiffany, you couldn't have asked for a better night to open the home season, and those who bought tickets had plenty to enjoy. 
Yeah. It's date night for Dan Moore and Peg Hayes. Two for club, please. And they decided to spend it helping the Colonels open their second season. Thank you. At the new Veterans Memorial Stadium. This is a real beautiful stadium. Can I help direct you guys to your Yeah, seat? I think we're in the third baseline someplace. Excuse us. It's just a beautiful night out tonight, and this is what summer's about. There are more filled seats than empty ones, but still, this is by no means a sellout. There is every reason to believe, though, that if this proves to be a good team, the crowd will get a lot bigger. Peanuts, popcorn, pop. We got water. We got it all right here. Dan and Peg think this could be the year that the Colonels go all the way. I'm looking for good things for this team. And if that does translate into more filled seats, everybody, including the city, which is expecting twice as much in lease payments this year, will be cheering. Specifically, the payment goes from $10,000 a month to $20,000. And coming up with that cash may be next to impossible unless the Colonels draw more fans. Last year, they saw nearly a 50% increase in attendance and would like to increase that number this year by another 10% or so. And tonight's game did draw more than last year's home opener. Tiffany? Jim Gray, we're putting live for us. Thanks, Jim. And by the way, the Colonels won tonight. We'll have highlights coming up on that later in sports. And as you saw from the ballpark, a great night to be outside and do pretty much anything. We had to drag Ryan Burchett back for the forecast. No kidding. I could have uh, stayed out there all night. And with temperatures like this, it's comfortable enough to uh, do just that. Uh, things wrapping up out at the ballpark. Still in the mid to low 50s for most of us. Waterloo a little cooler at 47, but it looks like another great day on the way as we head through the day tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine. Temperatures warming up to near 70 degrees again. And it looks even warmer by early next week. I'll have your forecast coming up. All right, thanks very much, Ryan. Here's the latest now in the war with Iraq. U.S. forces in Baghdad have been told to try and stem the looting that's been rampant since the city fell. Some Iraqis have been taking things into their own hands, guarding their possessions with guns and knives. Meanwhile, President Bush says he does not know what's happened to Saddam Hussein, but he does know for sure the Iraqi leader is out of power. Bush is stopping short of declaring a victory in Iraq. The president says some objectives must still be met. So is Saddam Hussein dead or alive? U.S. intelligence has picked up some phone calls among members of the Iraqi regime, but the information is not rock solid. Some of the intercepted calls say he was killed in the surprise attack with cruise missiles and stealth fighters on the first night of the war, even though he later appeared on tapes broadcast on Iraqi TV. Other calls say he was killed Monday when B-1 bombers hit a pair of buildings he was believed to be in. Intelligence officials say they are tipping toward the conclusion Saddam is really dead. But Defense Secretary Rumsfeld is not yet convinced. I've not personally seen enough intelligence from reliable sources that would enable me to walk up and say that I have conviction that he's dead. Meanwhile, anti-Saddam tribes are reported to have picked up two of Saddam's half-brothers, but one of his wives and one of his daughters may have made it into Syria. And as the war continues, keep it here to CBS 2 for the very latest. With the combined resources of CBS and CNN, we're able to give you the most complete, up-to-the-minute information. While many, many college students were off to Mexico and Florida, Cornell College student Abigail Ozan spent her spring break in the Middle East. Ozan went to the West Bank to witness firsthand the conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians. Now back home, she says her experience is only half done. She plans to use her memories and pictures to teach people about what's really going on over there. Palestinians, Israelis, everyone's afraid. And so it makes me very sad, and especially for the children on both sides, that they grow up with that hate and that violence around them. Ozan says it was an interesting time to be in the Mideast. While she was physically closer to the war in Iraq, she wasn't as connected to it because she had less access to media. A robber held up a Dubuque bank this afternoon. Police were called to Liberty Bank on Jackson Street around 2.30. The robber entered the bank, demanded cash, but did not show a weapon. He got away with an undisclosed amount of cash. No one was hurt. Few details tonight as Cedar Rapids police worked to investigate a shooting last night on the city's southwest side. Police were called to Mercy Medical Center after 21-year-old Nicholas Eckley of Cedar Rapids was admitted for treatment. He's now listed in good condition. Officers were also sent to the 1200 block of K Street Southwest. Police say they are following up on information related to the case. The Dubuque dad charged with killing his two children and attempting to kill his estranged wife now says he's guilty of those crimes. 
Michael Walker told investigators he suffocated his nine-year-old daughter, Lindsay, and strangled his son, eight-year-old Jordan, on February 17th. He also admits trying to kill his wife and intending to commit suicide, he says, so his family could be together. He'll be sentenced in June. The rain may have cleared in Augusta, Georgia, but the cloud of controversy still looms over the Masters Golf Tournament. Augusta National is a private golf course that does not allow women to become members. CBS 2's Tara Raffi joins us now live in our Cedar Rapids newsroom. There is a protest planned at tomorrow's Masters. That's right, Dave. And locally, the no women rule has some competitive golfers saying the policy is completely off course. The Xavier High School girls golf team takes their sport seriously. And some of them wouldn't mind taking a swing at Augusta National's exclusive rule. I think it's crazy that they're not, and it's just going back to where we started with the, like, before women could vote. I don't agree with it, but I think that if it's been a really long tradition, there's not much you can do about it. I think it is uh, pretty sexist myself. It's kind of saying that we aren't, like, as good of golfers as them, but we are. The Xavier students are obviously better golfers than I am. But some of them say neither skill nor sex should decide where you get to play. I think it's a shame that in our country when we uh, preach freedom and all that kind of thing that um, it's not shown more evident in places like that. But some say that's exactly why the rule is okay, because this is a free country. That's their prerogative to make it a men's men only, and it's a private club. Why should they protest? I've got mixed emotions. It's been that way a long time, yet, you know, a lot of things have changed. It's an issue driving these young women to seek change. I think they should be able to play there. As for the Masters Tournament tomorrow, protesters cannot legally hold a mass protest in front of the club. But the protest leader, Martha Burke, says that isn't going to stop her campaign. Dave? Tony Rathie live in our Cedar Rapids newsroom. Thanks. And they can play there. They just right, can't they become can't be members. members of the club. Okay. Well, up next on CBS 2 News at 10, this Centerpoint woman couldn't tell her friends how far she got on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Tonight. She breaks her silence. And the reasons behind Drake coach Kurt Kanasky's unexpected resignation later in sports. This is CBS 2 News at 10 with Tiffany O'Donnell, Dave Benton, meteorologist Ryan Burchett, and sports with Andy Garman. These are the final days of Chrysler's National Minivan Event. So hurry in for great deals on our luxury minivan family, America's best minivan value. Now we'll match your down payment up to $750 and give you a $3,500 cash allowance for up to $5,000 down on town and country. Add our powertrain limited warranty, and it's not only the ultimate minivan value, it's the ultimate reward for your family. So hurry in. This event ends April 30th. Check out America's best values at your Chrysler dealer today. At EHC Commercial Services, Lawnmower Man is ready to improve the looks of your lawn. Lawnmower Man has dedicated his life to fighting long grass, weeds, unkept sidewalks, and driveways. Sometimes he works faster than the equipment. Lawnmower Man is always on the lookout for businesses that need his help, and he is ready for action when called to duty. Don't sign another lawn contract until you've priced with EHC. Call today for a free estimate. You're watching CBS 2 News at 10. Our role is to provide the energy you need. Energy for your active life. To help you reach your goals. Our role is to provide you with energy value. Energy that's delivered safely. Safe energy for your home, your business, your neighborhood. Our role is to be there when you need us. To provide reliable service. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. No matter what, you can depend on us. For energy that works. Our role is to put energy to work for you. Alliance Energy. We're on for you. Alliance Energy. What's new this morning at Hardy's? Oh, it's something good. Cinnamon rolled up in warm golden pastry, and then I smother them with real cream cheese icing. New cinnamon rolls baked fresh every morning, only at Hardy's. Most states prohibit showing large breasts on television. Unless, of course, it's on a sandwich. The Big Chicken Filet, new at Hardy's. CBS 2 News is brought to you by Grover Chevrolet and Newhall, just west of Cedar Rapids. You have $125,000! Oh
A center point woman can now share her secret with everyone. She's $125,000 richer after her two-day run on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. That was so exciting. Was Welcome back to CBS2 News at 10. Center Point Urbana teacher Dietta Anderson seemed to have luck on her side tonight as she admittedly guessed through several questions. She walked away after the 125000 but when given a chance to guess at the answer to the $250,000 question just for fun, she got it right as well. Dietta Anderson tried out for the show during a CBS-sponsored auditions last fall. Well, sticking with money, the president's wallet a little lighter tonight. He's had to pay his share to Uncle Sam. The president's tax, re tax return tops our eye on the world this Friday night. The White House says President and Mrs. Mrs. Bush have paid a third of their income in taxes. A written statement says the first couple reported taxable income of just under $772,000 for last year. That includes the president's salary of $400,000 and income from a trust in which the Bush's assets are held. One worker was killed in an explosion at a Louisville, Kentucky food plant. Four other workers escaped unharmed. The early morning blast shook windows more than three miles away and released a cloud of ammonia near the D.D. Williamson plant. Residents were warned to stay in their homes. The fire department says the victim had noticed a leaking tank of ammonia and was walking toward it.